YouTube, it's your boy Thomas back again with another rendition of Truth Be Told. Now this week, the big news, whatever uh, that I've seen so far, is, you know, they were talking about there was a third balloon that they found. Uh, China is gearing for war. Uh, what else? Apparently, they're having conflicts over there in the Philippines with China, the United States and China. Uh, most of the European countries are wanting to get into it with Russia. Um, and I saw a little bit on the whole, uh, apparently, uh, Carrie Lake is probably going to run for senator. Uh, I saw a couple little things in, in between YouTubers. And I don't really care for any of that shit. It's dumb as shit. All these YouTubers going at each other's throats. Um, I think it's dumb. But whatever. That's all on them. It doesn't really affect me. Because most of their channels I don't watch anyway. Um, so let's just get into it. What? We're here to talk about this week, and then we'll get on to your B-movie reviews. Um, first thing I want to talk about is I just got done watching season three of the show called C. Uh, that was on Apple Prime or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, you know, the streaming, Apple stream service. That stars Jason Moma. Literally the worst actor I've ever seen. He cannot act. Plus in every television or excuse me, every show he's ever in, he always has to play this big badass in every show. Including this one. He's the big badass. Um Except for his first movie. His first movie, he was this little tiny guy in this something to do about being a surfer. That's all I remember. The first time I seen him, he played this surfer. If anything else, he's played like some type of action hero or some shit. And he sucks at acting. This is probably the only television show... I've seen him do where he actually fits the part. Everything else he's ever done, he sucks. Like, he literally is not an Aquaman. He sucks at it. He's terrible at it. Plus, he doesn't even look like Aquaman. So, that right off the bat should give you a red flag. But anyways, regardless... Season 3 is C. Now, if you watch the other two pre previous seasons, they have this... The, the story is basically, you have these two sisters who have come down from a line of supposed royalty. Basically, just, you know, they pretty much... Uh, after whatever happened, like a nuclear holocaust or something, everybody went blind on the, whole, the entire planet. And a few groups split off and made their own, like, little kingdoms or whatever. Everyone kind of just kind of fell back to the medieval ages, but yet they're all blind. Anyways, the main story is about these two sisters... Who, uh, you know, come down the line through this royalty shit. 
I, I, th I think it's 400 years later. I, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure how, how long it is, but I think it's 400 years later. Uh, it's been a while since I watched the first season. But anyways, uh, they, uh, they're kind of at a rivalry. The big sister, she loves the little sister, but at the same time, she wants to kill her. Uh, because the little sister slept with this guy who could see. Uh, there was a rumor going around that there was one guy who could see. And it's uh, they've made this whole religion up to where it's forbidden to see, be able to see you're a witch and you should be killed. Um, and the bigger, the bigger older sister, who becomes queen, uh, wants to kill the little sister because she slept with this guy who could see. Which the big sister was actually, you know, she was in love with him or, or really liked him, was into him. And he liked the little sister instead. Uh, but anyways, that guy left and went on his own. Apparently he started creating or sleeping with other women. A lot of other women. So he could create more people who could see. Um, the little sister flees the kingdom. <clears throat> she runs into a tribe that lives like in the mountains. And Jason Moma is the, the leader of that tribe. And they get together. Uh, she has twins. And... Uh, <clears throat> He marries her and takes care of the kids as a, as if they're his own. Uh, but they're constantly running, <coughs> excuse me, and trying to find another place to live because the queen is constantly trying to hunt th hunt them down. She wants them killed uh, because the kids can see. Eventually, there's a falling out, like in the second season, and the queen is no longer a queen. Uh, the sister ends up getting with this guy who has this city, and uh, she becomes the queen of that city. And then she starts trying to hunt down her older sister. Uh, eventually, in season three, uh, the queen ends up, or the older sister, she ends up with the, uh, a, a different nation or kingdom or whatever with the scientist who's found, uh, you know, a few kids that could see and that was making bombs for them. Uh, old technology, they called it because uh, nobody else had it. So he figured he'd make these bombs and start conquering cities. So she joins up with him and they try to kill her little sister who's the queen now. Uh, Jason Moma comes in, saves the day, blows everybody up to shit, uh, including himself. And then that's pretty much the end of the show done um, the 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 younger sister actually kills the older sister because she's loony as fuck she's crazy she's killing people she was killing people left and right and she's just out there so she ends up killing her uh, she stays as the queen and her son he decides to blind himself so he could be a part of the community of blind people and the the girl the daughter she goes with uh, her she has to be a token gay character so she goes with her her girlfriend and they go find a bunch of other people that could see now her girlfriend can see too uh, the guy that was going around it was a black guy 
who slept with the little sister. Uh, he, he, he was going around making other kids that could see, but at the same time, he wasn't the only one who could see. Uh, there were a few others that were starting to be able to see. Uh, one of them was this girl that went with the daughter, and they found uh, a group in this city that could see. Uh, there was like several of them, like 15, 20 of them or whatever. And that's that's how the show ends. Uh, I like the show for the most part. I thought the whole token lesbian couple was kind of stupid. But whatever. You know, I, I'm not... The only reason why I thought it was dumb... It's because you've heard me say before, it's like every show now, every movie, every television show has to have a, a token gay couple or gay character in their fucking show to appease the 1% insane woke leftist alphabet community. Every time, it never fails. Every show has to have one now. It's just dumb because there's not that many gay people in the world. That's just retarded. But whatever. Uh, other than that fact, the show is actually pretty decent. And I have to give it, even though I do not like the character, uh, the older sister who played the queen, dude, she, she literally makes you want to fucking strangle her yourself. I mean, she's a fucking cunt. I, I say the C word because she was. She wasn't a bitch. She was a cunt. And she would kill people left and right just for the fuck of it. You know, she was loonier and fuck. She did an excellent... The actress who played her did an excellent job. Because you really wanted to kill that woman. Uh, and like I said, I don't like Jason Moment. I think he's a shitty actor. But... He actually fit the part in this television show. The only time I've ever agreed with him being in a show. I hated him for fucking up Conan the Barbarian. He was terrible in it. He didn't look nothing like Conan. Not a... Th and he was ten times shorter than everybody else. It was just retarded. But anyways... C was, C was a pretty good story... I like the whole apocalyptic thing. I like shows like that if they're done right. This one was okay. Uh, it's kind of strange because they never explain what really happened to make everybody go blind. It never does explain this. Uh, but other than that, I liked the show. I would have preferred them traveling around more, but they kind of stayed like in certain areas all the time, which kind of sucked. I'd rather them travel like they're going hunting or looking for something else. But anyways, that was that. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is... Uh, is a video game now if you want to watch C I say go ahead and give it at least a one time watch it's a good sci-fi show for the most part I think it could have been done just a little bit better but it wasn't too bad and you had some decent actors in it so I give it a thumbs up thumbs down it's not for everybody it's okay it wasn't like spectacular or anything now this next Thing I'm talking about is a video, like I said, a video game, and it's called Knack. K N A C K. Um, this is more, this game is like a, uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's for the PS4. It's like a story mode type game, kind of like the original God of Wars. Which I don't have a problem with. I'm okay with something like that. And you know, in God of War, they kind of—it's not open world. Like you're—you're you're forced 
into going a certain pathway all the time. You have to go a certain direction and follow the story. And that's what this game does. It's, uh, this knack. Uh, the story is bizarre. It is weird, weird. Even for me, and I'm a sci-fi lover. I just thought that it's Japanese. And Japanese, when it comes to Japanese video games, it's either a hit or a miss. This was kind of a miss for me. Because the story was just bizarre. The lead character is this, which they don't explain anywhere in the story. Is this little glowing ball that can collect uh, these weird blocks from this planet that create energy. It can it can make them bigger or smaller and do weird shit. There's even times where he can collect wood and metal and and do the same thing. It's weird. It's strange. Um, they never explain. They're fighting these. Uh, the humans are fighting uh, goblins. And they never explain. You can tell from the story. The goblins of o or orcs or whatever they are. They've always been on the planet. Uh, the humans came around. And there was this big crystal war. They mentioned something called the crystal war. Uh, they had a big war over the crystals. And then which give power and shit to machines. It's weird. But they don't explain where the humans came from or how they got there to that planet. Like, there nothing about spaceships or they colonized or there was a gateway that got them there, kind of like Stargate or anything like that. They don't explain any of that. So it's kind of strange. The story's way off. And then the boss, the final boss at the end, you have to defeat another Knack type creature that is ten times bitter, bigger than Knack. What I mean by that is Knack is this little glowing ball and this creature is this giant ball with the same kind of eye thing or whatever. It's weird. Uh, you have to beat it at the end and it... It doesn't explain a lot, except for the the creature is part of a, a bunch of building blocks similar to Knack who want to, like, take over the planet. Uh, uh, what is that called? When they, uh, I can't think of it right now, but, you know, they wants, it, it wants to convert another alien race that wants to convert the planet to them. It's weird. It's strange. Uh, so, but they're supposed to be ancient blocks. Like, it's old, old shit. Knack is supposed to be like old alien technology that the humans just stumbled upon. I don't know. And then the, once they stumbled upon it, they, you know, the orcs or goblins, they got in a war with them because they saw what the crystals could do. So it's kind of strange. It's weird. Uh... Was an okay game. It was okay. But I really didn't care for it that much. It wasn't really that good. Uh, it was a miss for me. Like I said, Japanese, they have some weird fucking sci-fi shit. They do weird shit. They really do. As I was saying, the Japanese do weird shit sometimes. Uh, it's always a hit or miss for me. Uh... But this was, I, it was a miss for me. It was all right, but again, I just didn't care for it all that much. I, I beat the game within eight hours. It didn't take long at all to beat the game. You know, I, you know, I played it like a couple hours every night or whatever, and I beat it. It was that simple, that easy. Uh, now, it did have this thing. Where if you found uh, supposed secret rooms, uh, you would get a piece of uh, some technology or some crystal that may uh, that gave you. A, if you found enough secret rooms, 
like five secret rooms they give you five pieces of this particular technology that would you know like a sonar device to help you locate secret rooms or some shit like that or it'd give you a power up you found so many crystals uh, it would boost your attack or some shit like that but here's the problem you don't get it in the first run I think I got I was able to complete two machine tech machines found all the parts to him in that one run through the whole game I found every secret room and it only gave me enough for and there were several other uh, machines to build uh, that, that I, were fi I was finding parts for. Same thing with the power-ups. I never got one of the power-ups. And there were like six or seven power-ups, different colored crystals. But you had to collect so many of them to get that power-up. And it never gave it to me. So, the creators, they wanted you to keep playing the game over and over again. To get all that shit. To use it on the next run. I'm like, why? It's the same fucking story. Why would I fucking do that? That's retarded. You should give it out flat out. There shouldn't be, a, you know, trying to build it. It's dumb. It was dumb. But other than that, that was really my major complaint with the game. Rest of it was okay. Oh, and you only had one attack. Uh, you know, you get to punch him or you jumped on him. That was it. That was the only attack you got. Now, you had combos or whatever, but again, you had to find pieces to the combo for the tech that allow you to do combo. And I never, I never got that. You know, I, I got, like I said, I found all the, all the runes, but I wasn't going to go through the game again just to collect that shit. Just for, you know, I didn't want to do the story all over again. It was just dumb. That was my major complaint about the game. Other than that, it's okay. Yeah, I gave it thumbs up, thumbs down. But it kind of missed for me. Alright, movie holics, let's get on to your B movie reviews. This is Sci-Fi Week. So the first movie we're going to talk about is Battle for the Lost Planet. Uh, otherwise, it's also known as Galaxy Destroyer. Uh, it was done in 1986. There's no box office numbers for it. Uh, starred Matt Miller and Denise Coward. Like, what a last name, Coward. It's just weird. Anyways, the story is this guy steals some some type of technical mumbo jumbo on a fucking tape, and he's using a cassette tape, you know. So it tells you the the you know the time that this movie was made. It's on a cassette tape. Anyway. He jumps into a space shuttle. I mean, actually, it looks like a space shuttle. And takes off to escape some, like, look like federal agents. They were supposed to be, like, some kind of federal agents or some shit. He takes off in this space shuttle. Uh, as he's taking off, 
he he rams the building to get out of the building with the space shuttle so he kind of damages the ship a little bit and as he's taken off uh, from the planet uh, the the computer on board yes there's a computer that talks uh, in the space show which is kind of weird but anyways it tells him that uh, he will not be able to get back to planet earth uh, for five years that it's on a loop it's supposed to loop around uh, I think Mercury or some shit and the Sun and then it comes back to the planet it's on a specific course and he can't deviate from it and he's like what the fuck cuz all he screwed up the manual controls or some shit so he has to go with the autopilot the computer He's like, what the fuck? So he's going to be on there for five years. As he hears this, he sees all these weird-looking spaceships show up in orbit around Earth and then fire on the planet. And it, they pretty much decimate the Earth popu or the human population. So he knows he's going to come back to a fucked-up world uh, or Earth. He eventually gets back. Uh, he meets this resistance group, and uh, which really is only like a couple of people or something in this weird abandoned wooden building, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And then he meets this other guy because he, they all know who he is because apparently. His name's famous because he took the tape. They had the mumbo jumbo. They just happened to know about it. Uh, which is to some secret weapon that uh, through genetics you can genetically kill what you want. Like, uh, you know, if you want to kill all humans, you put in, you know, the genetic marker for humans in this machine or whatever and they'll kill all humans. Well, apparently the aliens that conquered the planet don't know about it. So, he goes to go use the machine to kill all the aliens. Uh, he's got a woman that's with him. Uh, that She's pr pretty, pretty... She's pretty bossy. Uh, but they get to this one guy's lair. He's... He pretty much runs like this little motorcycle game with a bunch of women. And uh, he basically takes him. Apparently he was an employee of the guy who built the thing, the machine. They go there and uh, they, the guy who built the machine apparently is still alive and in this building. And this building looks like it's like a run done... Okay, you've ever watched YouTube videos where they're doing urban exploring? That's what this building looks like. It looks run down and everything. You know, I mean, it looks pitiful. But somehow he's still there and alive, even though the aliens are there too. It makes no sense. Uh, he's still working on the machine. He just can't figure out how to kill the aliens until... Uh, the the idiot that's with him tells him, why don't you just figure figure the machine to keep everything that's Earth-based alive and anything that doesn't belong to the Earth, kill it off. He's like, oh, that'll work. And that's what they do. So they kill the aliens, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. Uh, I mean, it's... This movie, I'm telling you right now, it is super cheesy super the graphics are really you have some claymation in this you have uh, you know dummies flying off buildings you know you, you can tell all the ships are made from little model toy models you know it's pretty cheesy really cheesy the acting really isn't very good at all uh 
uh, unless you're a hardcore sci-fi fan, I probably would watch this. I give it two thumbs down. It was pretty, it wasn't really a good movie. All right, let's move on to your next one. The next one is called Parallels, and it was done in 2015 and starred Mark Hapka and Jessica Roth. Now, this show was actually supposed to be a TV series. It was done on Netflix, but they just turned it into a movie because they decided to cancel it before it even got took off. Uh, I like the idea. I like the concept. Uh, there's a building uh, that once you go into it, it's kind of shifts dimensions. It goes into a, a parallel world like every 36 hours. It'll shift and go into an, another parallel world. Um, you know, the things uh, might look similar but are very different in this other Earth. Um, I like the show for the most part, but the problem I have, I like the main actor, the 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 guy who's the the fighter. He was okay, um, and the Asian chick that they meet in the building, she was okay too. I didn't mind those two. Everybody else, I didn't like. I didn't like any of the other actors. I thought they sucked, especially the annoying friend that has a thing for his sister. Really annoying. I couldn't stand him. Anyways, uh, there was a lot of mystery involved. Like, somehow their dad was involved in the whole building somehow. But yet, he claims he didn't build the building. That it was older than time. Nobody knew where the building came from or how it got there. And old ones overlooked. Well, that can't be possible because obviously the building is modern construction. So if it's older than time, then you know somebody knows something. There, and it didn't just pop out of nowhere. Uh, you know, if it's been around that long throughout time, you know, modern construction or modern. A modern building would have been noticed. So that was kind of dumb when he said that. And then he claims that, you know, him and their mother is from a different earth. Uh, they just settled down in that one particular earth because of them. To raise them. I was like, mm, that don't make no sense if they have, you know, doppelgangers in all these earths. Which they did. Supposedly, they all have, like, these doppelgangers. You know, a ver another version of them in one of these other Earths. But at the same time, uh, the main character, the the fighter got a kid or whatever. He doesn't have one in this particular Earth or whatever. Uh, he don't have a doppelganger. And the Asian chick tries to tell him, well... That usually means that they were either never born or they died. They're doppelganger. But anyways, regardless, the mother supposedly died, but then the father says, no, no, she's alive on a different earth. Which didn't make no sense because uh, the main guy, he's all like, I saw my mother die. And he's all like, uh, you only saw part of her die. And I was like, what the fuck? That don't make no sense. What the fuck's he talking about? And then he tells them there's no one upstairs in the building, even though uh, after, uh, you know, the building has several floors, like 20 floors. But at, you know, floor 7 or 8, it's cut off. You can't get up there unless you use the elevator. And the father tells him, you know, there's no one up there. No one's running it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, this tinker guy that they pick up that originally tried to kill him. He hacks into the building and is able to control the building. And the father punches in that they can go anywhere on this map or whatever. But he's got his own war to fight. So he leaves the building and lets them travel by themselves to another Earth. And he claims he's been traveling to different Earths for a while. 
They also have tech from a, uh, an Earth that's really technologically advanced that the father seems to be from, the mother and the father. It makes no sense. It was kind of strange. I Like I said, I like the premises. I like the, the way the story... Uh, original you know the basics before the father started talking a bunch of nonsense i like the basis of it but then once the father tried to explain a bunch it just made it worse because they're because then you're like what the fuck's this is so dumb this makes no sense and then the the other idea that i liked was at the very end you saw the asian chick uh Two of her doppelgangers were with her in the building, and they were taking turns going out with the the other three, which I thought was a cool concept too. Like they're working together, the, her and her doppelgangers are working together. That, it was kind of cool concept. So, like I said, cool concept, and just really flawed with the father talking a bunch of nonsense not explaining anything left a bunch of mystery other than that the show was all right you know i give it a thumbs up and a thumbs down it could have been way better and i'm kind of sad they didn't do something with it but whatever it is what it is uh, and that's all i got for you this week if you have any thoughts about what i talked about earlier in the video Please you leave your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, also, if you could think of any B-movies that I may never have seen or heard of, you think, please leave your suggestions down in the comment section down below, and I'll get to reviewing them as soon as I can. So until next time, I told you you'd be told the truth. And you've just been told.